Today I'm gonna to show you guys how to make an awesome logo in Photoshop. Hey guys and welcome to Flearn where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find us on Twitter at Flearn. Today we're doing something really cool. We're actually creating a logo for our recent pro tutorial which is a dark force and I'm gonna show you guys how to find the actual font. We're gonna show you guys how to adjust the fonts and how to like warp and shape them and things like that. How to adjust the spacing between the letters and even how to add textures and use layer effects and things like that to make something that really is unique. It's gonna be super cool. Let's get into it. So this is our image. This is our dark force image that we're going to be adding a font to and it's Star Wars based and I, I really love this image. It's so cool and I wanted something that was gonna kind of fit with the overall theme of this image and um, so I went over to one of my favorite websites. Uh, it's just uh, it's called dafont.com and um, it, what's really cool about this website is you can type in like you know if you want to see like decorative fonts or um, an old school font or whatever um, you can actually type in like in this case I typed in a dark force and it'll show you what that looks like in this font so that's really cool. So this is where I got the uh, font it's just a wonderful place to get fonts and then head it back over into Photoshop after downloading the font you can just double click on it and then it'll install it for you. So after getting the font uh, installing it and everything now I'm going to show you guys how to actually make the logo in Photoshop. So what we're going to do is I'm going to grab my type tool so this is just you can hit T for the type tool it's just the regular horizontal type tool here I'm going to click right over here and I'm going to type capital A. There we go. That looks pretty good. Now I want to, let's go ahead and go to window and then down to character. All right. We're going to make this a bit bigger just so we can see what we're doing here. Okay. Now when you're making a font either larger or smaller in Photoshop, I really recommend using this, um, using this thing right here like you can just click and drag instead of hitting command T and scaling it because that's going to mess up some of your other functions here so actually like use the use the sizing option that's built in to there we go that's built into the actual um, type tool okay now what we're going to do is I'm going to hit command J and move this over and we're going to double click I'm just going to say D-A-R-K and hit command enter so that's dark okay and then I'm going to hit command J on this again double click on this and we're going to say force so that's exactly what we want a dark force okay actually you know what I'm on caps lock here so I'm actually going to make this not caps lock <laughs> um, there we go and this is one of those cases where the the lower caps still looks like caps but I can see here on my layers that it was caps um, the reason was it was kind of like it was changing the height of all these letters. That's going to be font specific. Okay, so now that we have our dark force here, there are a couple of things that I want to do. I want this A to look like it's kind of like um, leading into the actual dark force instead of just you know being off to the side there. So we're going to go ahead and make that quite a bit larger. There we go. Let's use our move tool here, and then I'm going to shift the click the two of those, and we'll make those a bit smaller. I want these to be about the same size. So the A is going to be about as tall as uh, both of those combined. There we go. And then I'm going to show you guys some really cool ways to actually like match them and everything like that. Okay. So here we have a dark force. Now what we're going to do is I want this A to kind of like instead of just being way out here, I'd like this right edge to actually match up with what's going on here. So I'm going to um, I'm going to hold down command and click on both dark and force and then I'm going to click on this left align here. So I've got my move tool and I'm going to click on this left align tool and you can see like even if one was like way over here if you shift click on the two of those and click this left align it's going to pop them both to the same place which is really cool. Okay now with the A I'm going to hit command T so now we actually are transforming and I'll hold down the controller or the command key and see if I can match this up to the dark force. Let's just move it over. There we go. Zoom in a little bit. All right, get it nice and lined up here on the bottom. And then I'm going to hold Control or Command and click on this top part right here. There we go. And go all the way over there to where it actually like looks. There we go. Let's see about... I just want to make sure it like lines up perfectly with... There we go. That's really nice. With both the dark and the forest. So basically we just took a normal A and I just switched off the side. 
And keep in mind, guys, like I'm not a professional graphic designer. Like I really don't know exactly what I'm doing right now. I'm just trying to create something that I like. <laughs> so, um, you know, I think this looks good. But there are probably some people in the world who will be like, man, that sucks. But whatever. Um, you know, Photoshop is about having fun. So there, to all those people. OK. <laughs> <laughs> what we're going to do now is I want to make sure that the spacing between all these letters and everything like that is the same. Um, like this, you know, the dark force and everything like that. Like the spacing between the F and the D here across and the spacing of here, I want to make sure that's all the same. So what we're going to do is I'm going to zoom in and we're going to create uh, with our marquee tool here. I'm going to grab the nice pink as our, our foreground color. I'm going to make a selection holding down shift. So we're making a square, which is the same width as it is the height and hold Alt or Option and hit, hit Delete. So now I know like this is the same, right? Because we, we already aligned this up, right? So this is the same width here. And all I need to do is make sure that this is about the same as over here as well. There are probably other ways to do it. This is just like a really quick, easy way to do it. OK, so now we're going to click on Dark. And I'm going to hit V from my Move tool and just click that down a couple times. So I know, I know the distance here is the same distance between our letters there. And that's just going to help it look a little bit more cohesive. I'm going to hit on the A button, or the, <laughs> the A button, just the letter A. I'm going to hit Command T, and I'm going to shrink that down just a little bit. All right, there we go. And generally, you don't want to like stretch and shrink letters too much, because they tend to look bad. But just a little bit here and there, especially when we're doing something like this, I think is OK. Um, so that's what we're going to do. All right, that looks pretty good. So that's a good start. Now the next thing I want to do is kind of, I want to make sure that the, the letters themselves are actually spaced pretty well apart. So where it says dark and where it says force, like I'd like those to end in about the same place. So here on force, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this. Um, you can see you can actually change the tracking of the letters. So I could give this like, you know, I could space each of the letters like 100 spaces apart, or I could do like a negative 25, something like that. Let's go like negative 100 on this. And then here on the dark, what we're going to do is I'm going to change that down to like 0, um, something like this. So we can kind of like adjust the spacing on these to make them a little bit to where they're the same. You could also work with the sizing on this, like make dark larger than force to make it like stretch out a little bit bigger. But um, I like changing the tracking a little bit more. All right, I'm going to change, let's try negative 150 here. OK, cool. So that looks pretty good. So dark is spaced out. So we've got even spacing here, even spacing across. It ends here, and it, it kind of comes up that way, just like that. Um, yeah, I think that looks really good. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and go ahead and close that dialog. And I'm going to show you guys how to style this a little bit more to make it just look a little bit more unique. So let's go ahead and double click on our force right here. And I'm going to click on where it says stroke, because I actually I do want to like stroke this um, stroke this letter or whatever. <laughs> and I'm going to hit my up arrow a couple times. There we go, which is just going to give us a slightly larger stroke. I'm not so concerned about the color right now, because I actually know that I'm going to do some color overlay on this in a little bit anyway. So right now, I'm like, I'm totally good with just having it be black. Not a, not a big deal. I'm also going to go to my blending options, and I'm going to bring my fill opacity down to 0. And what that's going to do, this is kind of cool actually, let's hit OK. The fill opacity controls what's actually filled in the layer. And then like the regular opacity, there we go, controls the opacity of the whole thing. So you can also adjust your fill right here if you wanted to do that. OK, let's just do, I'm going to hold Alt or Option and click on this layer effects from the, uh, from the force to the dark. And it's going to copy over the same, exact, um, the same exact layer effect. There we go. And then I just click on the dark and then bring fill back down to 0 as well on that. So we've got kind of like an interesting uh, effect here, which is like it's the same font, but these ones are not filled in, and this one is filled in. OK, so now that we have kind of like the base, this is like the base structure of the actual, um, you know, the actual logo that we want to make. I'm going to shift click all those and hit Command G to group those together. OK, and now we can start playing around with some really cool things, like clipping masks to make our um, image actually stand out. So I'm going to create a new layer. And I'm going to hit Option Command G. So this is something new to CS6 and Photoshop CC, where you can create a layer and you can clip it to a group. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to just grab my brush tool and grab like this color that's in our background here and just paint it over top of our actual logo. 
There we go, which is really cool. So I'm on this new layer here, but it's clipping to the group, so it's only gonna affect the group. And you can do that again, like a new layer here again, and I'm gonna create, now this time, like a slightly darker color. So it's gonna be like, you know, whoa, they made it dark on the top and light on the bottom. How would someone do that? No one's actually saying that, but <laughs> um, I think it's really cool. All right, so we'll do something like this. And you can just really get in here and have a lot of fun. This is like the whole point of it, is just get in here and kind of play around. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do, let's go ahead and size this just a little bit better. So I'm gonna shift click on all those and hit Command T. Let's go ahead and you know make this just a little bit smaller so it kind of fits in the, in the sun area. All right, maybe just a little bit smaller even. Okay, so now what we can do, I'm gonna create a new layer, Option Command G as well, and I'm gonna like sample this area over here in the rocks, and I'm gonna paint this over top of our, there we go, over top of our layer once more. So now, instead of like a solid color, you can see how we actually have like a, a texture in there. So it's actually, you know, like brings texture into the lettering, which is also really, really nice. And then we can change things like our uh, layer blending mode. Like if you wanted to change that to overlay or soft light, for instance, you could totally do that. So let's make a couple of these. And then this one, we'll just try a little bit on the dark side and we'll change this to like a multiply adjustment layer. Change our, there we go. And we'll just do it again. So I'm taking like elements from the actual image and putting them into there we go. I'm putting them into the font, which in my opinion just kind of like makes it, it ties it together with the font, or with the image just a little bit more. All right, we'll adjust our opacity on that one. And then, yeah, why not? Let's get some of the lights here from our, from our building. So I'm gonna hold Alter Option and sample that and kind of paint that in there. And on a new layer, we can, we can bring that in there. And then we, again, we can click on something like overlay or you know, um, we can even go to screen there we go, and you can do things like hit Command L. Like these are just regular layers, right? They just happen to be click, clipped to the font, so we could like bring it up so it, you know, we only see like this little bit of it or something like that. Like whatever you guys want, just make it more of like a subtle, subtle type effect there. Um, there we go. That looks really good. And then let's do just one more thing. I'm gonna grab this color and then we're just gonna go up to the right a little bit. There we go, and we'll change that to like overlay again, just to give it a little bit more color. Oh, that's cool. And then you can even use your move tool to like move these things around. Like if we wanted to bring that over there, you could, you could totally just, this is just your chance to do really whatever you want. And the other cool thing that I like about this is because we did all these with like clipping masks and things like that, I can still go back in here, and if we wanna open this up and like double click on this FX right here, I can change the stroke on this still, like in it, it's gonna still allow me to like, let's see, we're just gonna click here and I'm gonna use the up arrow. There we go. So I can still change the stroke and all the other effects kind of come with it. So I'm gonna hold Alt or Option and we're gonna go from one to the other now again. And all my effects are still, I need to stretch this out a little bit more um, vertically because uh, increasing the stroke made, the, uh, made both of the letters taller. All right, so those, all those effects that I did, because I've clipped all these other layers on top of it, like you can see, it started off like that, and then we're just kind of like going in here and adding different effects to this, all these different things, and I can still like turn these off and on and see if I like some more than others and look, change the opacity. It's really cool. This is one of the wonderful things about using like blending masks and, and whatnot, or clipping masks, is that you, you really just, you're not limited at all. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and shift click all of those layers and hit Command G as well. And then we're ready because they're all grouped together now. I can move them all together and we can just put this wherever we want. So um, you know, in our promotion for this tutorial and for this image, we put it like here in the corner and I chose slightly different colors, but you know, you could put it up here. You could, you know, let's say if it was over here, you'd wanna make it a little bit darker. So like maybe, you know, turn some of these off and, um, you know, maybe make it a little bit darker or a little bit lighter. So depending on where it's gonna go, um, you could just kind of like change like that. You know, that makes sense, just being a little bit li lighter and there a little bit darker kind of works for it. 
Um, this is, I, I love this sort of stuff. It's just kind of like playing around, but um, you know, it, it kind of like draws everything together as well, in my opinion. So we'll hit F to full screen it, and there we have our dark forest image. Cool, filling the screen. That was just a lot of fun. Guys, thank you so much for watching Flurn. I hope you enjoyed this and uh, you can take these ideas and you know, don't feel like you have to copy the same exact logo, but you can kind of take the ideas in the same way of thinking and you know, using the textures and things like that to do your own logos and you know, basically anything you guys want. It's a Christmas card or you know, a happy birthday or whatever it is. It's just a really cool place to get, like, get into Photoshop and have a lot of fun. If you guys like what we got going on here at Flurn, subscribe to our YouTube channel because we make a lot of these videos. Like a lot, like over 600, we've got a lot of <laughs> And you guys can leave us a comment right down below to let us know what you think about this episode and what else you guys would like to see and share it with your friends because it would mean a lot. And if you guys want to know more about this pro tutorial, which is so cool, uh, it's like four hours of Photoshop. We show you guys how to make the background and put the subjects in and just like, it's awesome. It really is. And especially if you're a Star Wars fan. Ugh. Anyway, you can find that. We'll put a link on the screen right now somewhere. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching Flurn, guys. I'll flurn you later. Bye, everyone.